You are so quiet. I really bless the Lord for this day that he has made that uh, we should come before him and hear from him. Uh, before we begin um, looking at uh, the word of God, let us just pray for the servants of God who are served. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we invite your presence in this place. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for all that you have been unto us, Lord. Thank you for bringing us to the close of this week, King of all the glory. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we also pray, Jehovah God, for safety and protection on the road, O Lord, for them that are traveling, Lord. Father, those servants who have left, Jehovah God, that your hand may be upon them, that your angel may protect them along the way, O God. Father, let them have safety, let them have your protection, and may you bring them back safely in Jesus' mighty name. Let the ministration that shall happen in that place be of benefit to the congregation in the, in the church in Machakos. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we adore you. Holy Spirit of God, may you come and fellowship with us. Come and help us, Jehovah, explore this word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today we are going to look at the word of God from the book of uh, Malachi, which is going to be our anchor scripture. Malachi is immediately before the book of Matthew, Malachi 1. The book of Malachi 1, uh, verse 6. From verse 6. And the title of our message is Honoring God in brackets, the Sovereign King. Hallelujah. Amen. Honoring God, in brackets, the Sovereign King. Honor God, the Sovereign King. Let us just read from the book as we begin from verse 6. And this is what uh, the word says. Uh, the title of that section is The Sins of the Priesthood. Verse 6. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. And then there is a full column. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name. And ye say, wherein, wherein have we despised thy name? Hallelujah. Verse 7. Ye offer polluted bread upon my, my altar, and ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. So, as we stop there, let us just define uh, define the word honor, uh, because many a time we have um, uh, we have not really given God the honor that He deserves, uh, because perhaps we do not understand uh, the extent to which that honor should go. So this is what uh, uh, the textbook definition of honor is. Uh, first of all, honor as a noun is high respect, great esteem. Amen. As a verb, to regard with great respect. Not, not just respect, but great respect. Hallelujah. Not just ordinary respect, but utmost uh, respect. So to me, this topic is really uh, close, uh, to, um, close to my heart as a Christian. Uh, because of uh, the kind of, uh, the weight of the message that this topic brings out in that we have not really honored God, we have not understood uh, His majesty, we have not understood the extent to which uh, God is mighty, uh, so that we have not given Him that honor. So there are several attributes of God uh, for us to give Him that, the honor that befits Him. There are several attributes that we should be uh, alive to. One, He is sovereign, that is number one. Number two, he is omnipotent. Let us dwell on the first one. He is sovereign. Um, being sovereign, being self-sufficient, being uh, 
you don't you do not have anyone that you answer to uh, that is the meaning of uh, being sovereign for instance you may have seen in our constitution perhaps article 1 says uh, that sovereignty belongs to the people that authority that ultimate authority is what sovereignty is so god is sovereign he himself is an authority unto himself he has no one else he is reporting to uh, there is no senior beyond god there is none beyond god that is what uh, i mean omnipotent number two he does everything he is able to do all things amen his hand is able to do all things number three omniscient he is all-knowing he knows everything uh, number four he is omnipresent present everywhere he knows all things uh, that happen in all places he knows you even you are being here the lord knows that you're here number five he is an eternal being we have seen how much reverence we give to the kings of the earth but perhaps we have not ever uh, wondered how do we give honor unto the lord so all these are attributes that we cannot attach to any earthly king it is only reserved for uh, our king the eternal king our god the sovereign god so it is important uh, to also understand that honor comes from recognition you cannot honor that which you do not recognize so if you do not recognize god as being all that we have uh, spoken about, being omnipresent, being omniscient, uh, being sovereign and all these things, being eternal, uh, plus many other qualities, then you will not give him the honor that befits his stature. You will not give him the honor that is due him as God. So all, um, uh, so it is important to know that there cannot be honor without um, Honor itself is an act of recognition. Amen? It is an act of saying, I understand uh, your importance, uh, I understand your role, so I esteem you highly. So as Christians, it is important that we place that uh, esteem unto, unto the Lord. So coming back to our word here, uh, Malachi 6, Malachi 1, 6. Let me just read it once again. A son honoreth his father, Amen. So you being a child of God needs to know that um, you have that duty to honor our Father, our Father who is our God, and a servant, his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? So how come the Lord is demanding of honor from us? Something that should just come about uh, automatically. You as a child of God, you need to honor God. How come your own father, you cannot dishonor your own father, but you dishonor God? It is because perhaps you have not understood. You have not uh, understood the extent to which um, he is mighty. You have not recognized God as your father, perhaps. That is the reason why you have not honored him. So... Um, one other thing that uh, we want to read is from the book of uh, Isaiah. Someone to read that from, uh, for us. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. I think it, was, it must be verse 13. Isaiah 9, 13. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart from far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by their percept of men. Amen. Just pause there. Amen. So in as much as we draw unto the Lord with vain talk. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hail the king. Hail the king alone is not honor. Amen. Amen. Honor itself should be, first of all, uh, we are going to look at ways to honor the Lord, but honor in itself should be uh, underpinned by the, the honor that comes from um, 
from the obedience to the word of God. That is the, the first level of honor. Hallelujah. Before any, anything else, that is the first uh, level of honor uh, that we should give uh, the Lord. And it is so surprising that in Malachi the Lord is saying, Look, you have not given me the honor that is due me. And he is talking to the priesthood. Meaning, you can be a child of God, but you do not honor God. Amen? You can be a child of God, but you do not honor God. Because you, you have not taken him as your father. You have not uh, internalized the fact that God is your father, uh, just as you have your earthly father here. And he is the father of all, uh, father of all fathers. So it is good to, uh, just as much as you honor your father on the earth, try to place as much honor unto the Lord, and even more. Amen. Another topic, number one, uh, how, how we, in brackets, think we, close the brackets, and then honor God. How we open the brackets, how we open the brackets and then write, think we, and then close the brackets, and then honor God. After that, put a dash and write the status quo. Usichanganyikiwe, hallelujah. I watch at once the number one. How we, and then open the brackets, write, and then your brackets and Ika, think we, and then close the brackets, and, re, and then write, honor God. Mkosawa, after God put a dash and write the status quo, that is things as they are. Hallelujah. So many, many times we may think we honor God by the things we do, but that is not the honor, the kind of honor that uh, the Lord uh, demands of us. That is why in the book of Isaiah 29, 13, he says, These people honor me with their lips only. They are only giving me lip service. How comes their, their hearts are sold out to other things? So, um, uh, so we've said how we, how we, so when you read that, you'll read it this way, how we think we honor God. Amen? Now, as I saw my bill, I think we, so that it becomes how we honor God. So how we do things as, uh, as it is right now, uh, thinking that we honor God, that is what uh, the title means. So what we do in our lives as Christians may sometimes be erroneously thought to, uh, to, or to by ourselves that, uh, and others that we own God. But, but many times uh, we, may, we miss the mark and uh, we think that whatever we do uh, really honor, uh, honors God. So the question becomes, how are we honoring God wrongly? Amen? How are we honoring God wrongly? Uh, back to Isaiah 29, 13. How are we honoring God wrongly? So essentially, this, uh, the Lord in this verse says, These people think they honor me through the things they say of me, through the things they tell others of me, through the things they even tell me, but they are far away from me. So the honor that they give me is not close to what I deserve. That is no honor, in other words. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. In other words, the honor that I deserve is really far away from me. It is their heart that I am interested in, not really their words. Amen. So we have been honoring God with empty words, not with our hearts. Amen. That is how we honor God wrongly. So that um, our hearts are not totally sold out to the ideals we claim to profess through our words. Amen. 
So it will not be lip service. It will not be, oh, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. Bwana sifiwe Susan, amen, hallelujah, amen. Tunamsifu bwana, tunampenda bwana, but then your heart is somewhere else. Remember those who shouted, hail the king in, uh, uh, at the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. They are the same ones who dishonored God later, amen. So number two, how to honor God. How then do we honor God? If the Lord says that you draw close to me with your lips, but your heart is somewhere else, then how ought we to honor the Lord? Wakati unakuja mbele za mfalme, for instance, you may put an invitation to Menda status. That is how you will present yourself. Amen? You look for a nice dress, you look for um, a nice outfit and make sure you're very smart. Utaandika speech, lapda. You will practice what you are going to say to the president if he gives uh, you a few seconds to talk. And uh, you'll make sure you are in your best element. Amen. But then how comes is it that ukija kwa buwana nasa inakuwa tu kashwa? Just, just come. Oh, nilikuwa, nilikuwa, nilikuwa kanisani by the way. Nilikuwa church. How to honor God. And then put a hyphen, the divine ideals. And again, it will not zitakuwa kwa group. I just want you to be active. Uh, we just want to honor God. Amen. How to honor God. The divine ideals. What God demands of you as honor. So honor unto the Lord may take many forms, but they are broadly divided into two. One is spiritual, the other one is physical. In our physical lives, we should honor the Lord. We are going to begin with the spiritual form of honor. Amen. So that kile ambacho tunafanya, kiwe inakubalika mbele za buwana. Number one, in worship. Worship in itself is a form of honor. And the worship I'm talking about here, it is the everyday living, the daily living as a Christian, so that your heart is totally sold out unto the Lord. You don't, excuse me, you don't just draw close to him with your, uh, with your words, but you draw close unto him even in deed. Amen even in whatever thing that you do. That is the kind uh, of honor that I'm speaking of. That is, that is the kind of worship I'm, uh, I'm talking about here. So, um, we can say that um, our daily lives should speak to the unconditional obedience to God's authority to observe holiness, and righteousness as the hallmarks of those who profess or identify with godly ideals and who thereby identify with royalty. Hallelujah. You see, when God demands of honor in the book of Malachi, it seems as though it is a request. Amen? But there, there are consequences of dishonoring God. There are consequences of dishonoring the king. Uh, if, say, today, uh, President Uhuru issues a decree and tells his uh, officers that this should be done, and then they go ahead and refuse to execute the decree of the king, then there are consequences for that. You cannot disobey uh, uh, the king and expect that there won't be any, uh, uh, any, any result out of that, out of that uh, disobedience. So total observance and adherence to the word of God and its ideals is the ultimate form of honor and thus encapsulates any honor man can give God. It is the best possible way by which man expresses submission to God's overriding will. So if today I come and tell you I honor God, but my life says otherwise, then that honor itself has no use. That is no honor. All honor unto God begins with our Christian lives. Amen. Another one, with your body. Someone to read for us 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. 
1st Corinthians 6 19 to 20. The Bible says, What? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you? Which you have of God, and you are not your own. 20. For you are brought with, with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God, God's. Amen. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So you cannot use your body for other use. That is dishonoring God. You cannot be using your body for... Um, you cannot give out your body to satanic use. Amen. Because that body is not yours. That spirit is not yours. They belong unto the Lord. Therefore, honor the Lord with your body. Amen. Hallelujah. So, it should be also emphasized that the Holy Spirit dwells uh, in, our, in our hearts. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that before you even think of, um, for you to honor God with your body, you must recognize first that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So, so it should be clean. Hallelujah. There should be that awakening that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit so that you honor God in all respects with your body and with your spirit. Physical forms of honor. How do you honor God uh, physically? Honoring God through your body is also physical. So there are a bit of, uh, there are some overlaps in these points that uh, we are talking about. So how do we honor God uh, physically? By giving ourselves and all that we have to the things of God. Amen. Uh, there is where Christ was asking Peter, do you love me? Uh, that is John 21. John 21. So lazima kuwe na ile, you should have that mindset that I serve a mighty king, that I serve a sovereign king. And what kind of honor does he deserve? That is the mindset that every Christian should have. It is not, uh, it is not just that, uh, uh, oh, tunamsifu uh, buwana, hallelujah. No, it should not end at that. So John 21, uh, 15. 17. John 21, 15 to 17. So when they had died, when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? He said unto him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. 16. He said to him again the, sec the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said unto him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. 17. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Do you love me? And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus was very brief on how he would, um, the expectation he lays on servants of God in honoring him. That is through service. Uh, that is uh, the next point, through service. Hallelujah. Feed my sheep, nothing else. Do you love me? Yes, yes, Lord, we love you, we really love you. Feed my sheep, nothing else. Feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. So all that Peter required is to understand that 
the service that he would give Christ was centered on his um, um, him as a servant was centered on feeding the sheep of Christ. So that is one way to honor God as a servant of God through service. Just just serve the Lord, feed my sheep. So if we take an um, if we take an equation here, for example, we want to equate uh, how um, uh, how kingdoms operate here and how perhaps the kingdom of God is. So you have the king's court and then you have the king and then you have the servants. Amen. So you place yourself in that position where any servant koile ile kingdom yenye iko hapa. So you are the servant. So sometimes you see the servants vile wao wanasimama they stand like this. They stand like that at the entryway waiting for the king's visitors. Mara mingi unaona kuna wale wako very busy wanaenda hapo wanaenda pale and then there are those who serve in who serve in the king's court. So place yourself in that situation. And then the king comes and says, he calls for you. So you go there and ask, uh, and he asks you, um, uh, Zacchaeus, do you love me? And then you say, yes, your majesty, but you know that I love you. And then he says, no. So do, do whatever thing that pertains to your station. Do you love me? Ah, but your majesty, I love you. What, what are you saying? I've been here, I've been here with you. He goes ahead and says, no, do what uh, pertains to your station, just do your work. So you cannot be a servant in the king's court and you're not doing anything. Amen? Then you're not a servant. You are a commoner. Hallelujah. You're not a servant. You are a commoner. So it is like um, there are those that the king has chosen to serve him and they are in different stations. Kunawale wana the man that get, uh, there are those who uh, serve closely with the king in the inner courts and then there are those who uh, perhaps serve in other, in other places. So you have men servants and you have maid servants. So you, as a child of God, once you are called by God, once God, once you have uh, received salvation, then you are admitted into that kingdom. Hallelujah. Not as a commoner, but as royalty, as a child of God. So if you find yourself as a servant of God, make sure that whatever the king requires is discharged. Hallelujah. Whatever the king needs is given unto him. Whatever service he needs is given unto him. So in the process you find, you honor God. Now we are back here. to Merudi Riyadh. So in the process you find, you serve God. You serve God. And in the process, uh, you honor God, and in the process, you honor the servants of God. But what should be, we should remember is that it is good to honor the servants uh, of God, but remember, the worship itself should be given to God alone. Hallelujah. So if, say, today, uh, you wanted to go and see the president, you wanted to get into status, and then you find a guard there. So because you don't want that guard to turn you away, uh, you want him to admit you to see the president, to see the king of the land, so you give him all the worship. You call him all the names, the good names that you should have called the king. You give him all the worship. But then what will you do to the king? Once he admits you, what will you do uh, to the king? And that is really wrong for that servant. Uh, to receive that kind of worship. Amen. On to the second point. Um, the physical forms of honoring God. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. That is one we say it's service. That, is, uh, that honors God. Why? Because the continuity of salvation. Christ is quite interested in continuing the good work of salvation that he began on the cross. So he desires that uh, people rise up and carry on with that work. That is a good way. In fact, that is the best way to honor God. You recognize the death of uh, Christ on the cross, and then you carry on with that work until he comes. Um, number two, 
physical forms of honor. One, we said service. Number two is in tithes and offerings. In giving. We honor God in giving. And let me tell you a secret. God will always pay back what you have given. He will always pay back. He is faithful. He will pay back. Malachi 3 verse, uh, verse, verse let us start from verse, uh, verse 7. Let me just read from verse 7. The title says the sins of the people. Uh, Malachi 3 7. Uh, this is what it says. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? So how do we return? Verse 8. Then God asks a question. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour out and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and i will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field saith the lord of hosts amen and all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land say the Lord of hosts. Amen? So we honor God through uh, our giving, through material um, uh, material possession. Hallelujah. If you cannot give your father, uh, for instance, to semi coins, for example, Leo Baba Petitia Pesa, Hafu Unampatia 20 book. If you cannot give your father that, how come Unakuja Kanyumba Yabuana Unampatia Iyo? Amen? So, by the way, let me tell you something. God, whatever honor you give God, He always returns it back. Amen? Ukimdarau, nae piata kuchukulia kwa uzito. He will take you lightly. He says that in His word, in the book of 1 Samuel 29. Anasema, I will take you lightly. Neta kuchukulia tu hivi Because you have taken me lightly. So you have not honored me. There is no reason why I myself, as the Lord of hosts, should give you any honor. You do not deserve honor because you thought I don't deserve honor as much. So the much we give our fathers on the earth, let us try to also uh, exhibit that when we give out unto the Lord. Anything, anything that can be used in the house of God, ensure that you give the best uh, that there is unto the Lord. Only the best portions. The best portions unto the Lord. Uh, let us just read that uh, that word. First uh, Samuel twenty nine, so that you see that God reciprocates honor. Many times, sazingine atalabda breakthrough ime chelewa ama ijawa ikuja, because you have not understood that if you honor God, He shall honor you. And tonight, let me just look up that scripture. First Samuel 2.30, sorry, not 29, 2.30. First Samuel uh, chapter 2, verse 30. First Samuel 2.30 Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father 
should walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Be it far from me, for them who honor me I will honor, and they who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Amen. You cannot treat God with disdain or contempt or disrespect and expect him to honor you. Hallelujah. It doesn't work like that. Wezi kuwa unamkosea heshima mfalme na unatarajia akupatie favor, akupatie kibali. It cannot happen. So if you want honor from God, honor him first. Amen. And he will return that honor back to you. So um so by essentially giving to the kingdom of God, if today, for instance, we say we are giving to the kingdom of God, we identify with that, with that kingdom. There is no way you will be paying taxes, and I'm really sorry for equating this with the taxes. You cannot be paying taxes to a republic you are not, uh, you do not belong to. Amen? That was just law. I, 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 won't, I, won't, I won't do that. I won't pay that. And I won't give my offerings. That is just like saying, I do not identify with this kingdom. Amen? While the natives were a particular land, they normally identify that, uh, with that kingdom through, one, number one, if you say you are a Kenyan, there are things that need to show that you are a Kenyan. First, you... Uh, the symbol of unity, you recognize the president, uh, you have a, a common a national language, for instance, and then uh, what else? Um, uh, the proceeds of your work, you pay taxes and all that. So there are a number of things that identify you as part of a given kingdom. So if you abdicate the role of one, then essentially you are saying, I'm not part of this kingdom, I do not intend to benefit from it. Number two, uh, number three, uh, physical forms. Um, um, in sharing with the less fortunate. Hallelujah. In sharing with the less fortunate. So in honoring God, we do as much as that which pleases God. We identify areas in which God will have glory, areas that really uh, matter to God. Things that are within uh, the, deep, the deepest uh, parts of the heart of God. Zile vitu ambavyo mungu pia anafuraia ukifanya. That is one way of uh, identifying the areas in which to honor God. So in sharing with the less fortunate. Proverbs 14.31 The book of Proverbs 14.31 Proverbs 14.31 He who oppresses the poor reproaches his maker, but he who honors him has mercy on the poor. Amen. Amen. Uh, my version says, He that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker, but... Uh, and then there is, a, there is a column. Whenever you see the Bible Malim and Imeko column, that is uh, an indication of st uh, putting emphasis on it, so that you you note that the point that comes after that column. But he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. Amen. So whenever um, you ensure that the welfare of the poor is well catered for, you honor God in a way. In a way you, you honor God. So don't abandon any of these things. They may seem lightly to you, but they really matter to God. They don't really need to seem uh, to matter to you. You just do them because they matter to God. Uh, Psalm uh, 41, 1, and then Matthew 25, 40. Psalm 41, verse 1. Psalm 41 verse 1, the Bible says, Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Amen. The Lord will deliver him in times of trouble. 
Blessed is he. Matthew 25, 40. Matthew 25, 40. The Bible says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, As much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Amen. The king, you, you need to understand the context in which the, 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 uh, the Lord is called as king. Amen. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So the king, th this is not... Um, now, the king of course uh, shall be Christ. But then, in his capacity as king, he has the ability to discharge honor. He has the ability to return that honor back unto you. So you say the sharing in uh, the less fortunate, number four, in humility, hallelujah, in humility. You see, you cannot uh, purport to honor God when you are not humble, when you are proud. You cannot honor God with pride. By being humble, uh, you honor you honor God because He esteems the, uh, the humble. He gives grace to the humble. He opposes or resists uh, the proud. So you cannot uh, purport to honor an authority you are not subject to. Amen. So humility in itself teaches you, I need to put my will down. There is an overriding will, a will that is greater than mine, the will of God. Amen. And let the will of God uh, uh, take over. First Peter 5 uh, verse 5 to 6 First Peter 5 verse 5 to 6 First Peter 5 5 to 6 Let me read that it says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. Uh, colon, for God resisted the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for, for you. So with humility, um, God derives honor from your humility. Amen? And he will return it back by lifting you up. Remember he says in his word that he shall exalt every valley and every hill shall be brought low. Um, Okay, humility, that is number four. Number five, with your time. Honor God with your time. So the question becomes, how then have you been using your time? Have you been using your time uh, for yourself so that you do the things that uh, please you? Or have you been using that time to build the kingdom of God? Psalm 144.4. Uh, You are employed. Uh, will you spend your employer's time anyhow? Don't do that. Amen? You will be sacked. Leo employer wako wakikupata uko Facebook, masaya kazi. And they are paying you, uh, they are paying you. Will that really be something that um, the employer will be pleased uh, with? The answer is no. So make sure, even the time you have is not yours. Amen. Hakuna, hakuna kitu yote tukonayo yetu. Kila kitu lazima kimtukuze guana. Everything we have, our time, our possessions, everything that is holy and righteous before him, everything that is acquired 
uh, through righteous means. Even the breath of life is not ours, so how can we claim the time is ours? It will be foolish. So we need to ensure that the best of our time is spent in the things of God. Uh, Psalm, um, Psalm 144.4 Let me just read. Man is like, van is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. So if your days are like a shadow that passeth uh, away, then we, you should ensure that the, the best of days you spend in serving God and uh, honoring God with your time. Give God your time. That is one way of honoring God. Uh, the availability of a servant in the king's court is one way to honor that king so that the king will be pleased with you. Isaiah 58, 13 to 14. Isaiah 58, 13 to 14. Isaiah 58, 13 to 14. The Bible says, If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath uh, the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then shall you delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Amen. The word of God essentially speaks to uh, the desire uh, of God to have us um, giving the best of our time. Make sure there is a dedicated time for God. God alone and the things that relate, uh, that pertains to the work of God. And then the promise is that he will cause us to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed us with the heritage of Jacob, the, uh, our Father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Amen? So the Lord will always reciprocate honor, as we mentioned. There is nothing that goes uh, to the Lord that doesn't have any benefit unto us. All the honor we give him is honor that uh, also works for us. It is good to honor the Lord because He will always pay it back. Uh, it reminds me, kuna wakati nilikuwa maali, kama I was um, I was given the office of uh, an acting D.O. town flani stataja nigeani when I was still a student. So I remember the first time um, there, there is a family friend alikuwa meni and barua from the P.S. office office of the president. And he handed it to me, akanyeleza, nikifika hapo, nipatie DC wa hapo, so that ani admit ni kue intern. So when I went, nikapata diyo ameenda training, paramilitary training kule manyani. So the office was vacant. DC akanyambia, hasa wewe umekuja na baru wa mzuri, uh, kuja ni kuonyeshe mahali. And then he went and uh, uh, called the secretary at the Fungo office, and then they handed me the office. Um... What happened is that I was seated with my colleagues, my classmates, and then I kawambia sasa njini, kuna ofisi pale ya chief. Mtenda mkae pa, mkae pale. So we were all eyeing the same office, but this year kasema pana njini, mtenda mkae pale, and then you'll be rotating. Yule atatoka, mungine ingie, hivo. So the first day, you see, he did not indicate to these people that uyu kijana amekuja hapa, ako training. So they thought I was a replacement to the DO1 when you're Leondoka. <laughs> so every day, uh, the administration police will come to my office and then they, they salute. <laughs> but I was very mean in the first week when I returned that salute because as a power ilikuwa, nimekalia kiti ya serikali, there are flags all over, uh, picture uh, uh, His Excellency. Uh, so there is a time system. They call them D1, 
duty as well, lakini siku hizi wanaitwa county commission assistants. So na salute DO3, DO3, DO2. That is how it goes. Sasa mimi nilikuwa kwa DO1 next to the DC. Assistant uh, county commissioner. So I used to salute the DC. Then the DC salutes uh, the PC, the PC, the regional commissioner, all the way minister, all the way to the president. So that is how uh, the chain of command was at that time and i think it is uh, that's how it is right now so we've gone there and uh, we've seen how they receive the mp and how these things are done how protocol is observed but those people are also mean they don't return okay salute mp to they don't re reciprocate that honor so they just uh, they just go so um my point is that um Whenever we honor God, God is not man. God will always return honor. Hallelujah. God will always return honor. It reached a point, sasa three months in Asia. Diyo uh, amerudi, amekalia ile kiti ya wageni, min mekalia yake, tunangaliana. And then he asked me, na ulikuwa station gani? What he didn't recall is that kuna wakati nikuwa mwanafunzi had gone there to reach out to him, to saidie maafisa waweze kutusaidia uh, kwa program ingine tulikuwa nayo kama wanafunzi so nikaanza kujiuma ulimi ulikuwa station gani sasa mimi nawaambia mimi nimekuwa tu hapa moi i've just been around and my colleague laughed yule mwenye tulikuwa tunasaidiana kwa program because he knew what he was asking namwambia kusema kweli mr so and so mimi ni mwanafunzi <laughs> Sasa tuzilisha hiyo siku. <laughs> Polisi waliacha kuja kwa ofisi yangu kunipigia salute. They now knew kumbe tumekuwa we have been giving honor to the wrong person. <laughs> We've been saluting the wrong person. Chai ile ilikuwa inaletwa na mandazi na kila kitu kaisha yote. So I was demoted <laughs> technically. Kwa sababu the substantive uh, holder of that office has come had to move to the registry so the dc phone at the registry can uliza when were you demoted so all the honor that came with that office ilienda yote ilienda yote kabisa so it, it was good it is good to be to be honored it is good to be honored uh, but make sure you use that office to return back the honor so i try as much as possible to serve those who came to me for help Yes, so we let us look at what God with our talents. We honor God with our talents. Anything the Lord has placed at your disposal, make sure you honor Him with that. First uh, Corinthians six eighteen to twenty. Anything the Lord places at your disposal, make sure. First Corinthians 6 18 to 20. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. That, that, that is for the next point, but hold on uh, to that. Uh, just hold it there. We'll read it on the next point. Uh, Matthew 25 14 to 30. Sorry. Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 14 to? 14 to 30. The Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straight away took his journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and added and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he who had received two, he also gained other two. But he who had received one went and did in the earth and he did his lord's and hid his lord's money. 
After a long time, the Lord of the servants came and reconciled with them. And so he who had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, you have delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you a, ru a ruler over my things. And enter you into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two, two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter you into the joy of your Lord. Then he which had received the, the, the one talent came and said, Lord, I know you too, and that you are an hard man, reaping where you have not sown, <laughs> and gathered, uh, gathering where you have not planted. I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in the earth. Lo, there you have that which is yours. His Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not planted. You ought therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I received my own. Take therefore the talent from him unto him which has ten talents. For, he, for unto everyone who has, who has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him who has not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into, the, uh, into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Hallelujah. So whatever God has placed in your hand, if you do not use it to honor God, then it is a loss unto him. Amen. It is a dishonor unto him. It is like you are saying, whatever you have given me, I will not use it for your benefit because uh, I am not sure whether you are going to return that back. You are not, you're, you're not sure whether I am going to reap the benefit of what I think I should be reaping from the thing that you placed in my hand. So ensure that chochote kile ambacho mungu wa mekupatia if it is if it is um, anything if it is bravery, if it is uh, your education, anything that the Lord has, has blessed you with ensure that you honor the Lord with it and uh, the Lord will pay back. Amen. We have seen he rewarded those and traded with whatever talents that he gave them uh, for, the, uh, for the use of uh, his work. Uh, number, I don't know which number it is, but just write, uh, we honor God with uh, our bodies, which are the temple of, of God. We shall not read that, but uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 18-20, First 1 Corinthians 6, 18-20, we will not read that, just note it. Uh, uh, so, um, we also honor God with our treasure that we mentioned, Malachi 3.10. Also write Proverbs uh, 3.9. Proverbs 3.9. I think I'll read that one. Proverbs 3.9. This is what it says. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first, first, first fruits of all thy increase. And this is the promise that he makes. Verse 10. Uh, a colon. And then verse 10. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Hallelujah. Honor thy, Lord, uh, honor thy God with uh, your...
finances, your treasure. So we also honor God with our hearts. You remember we read from Isaiah 29:13 where the Lord was decrying uh, the kind of vain honor that we give him through our words, our empty words. But then our hearts are sold out to other things. So we honor God with our hearts. Uh, Isaiah 29, 13, you write that. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5. Let me just read that because I'm there. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. So ensure that your heart is given to the Lord. Proverbs 4, uh, 23. Proverbs 4, 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Uh, Proverbs 23.26 Proverbs 23.26 says, My son, give me thine heart. Amen? When the Lord calls us uh, his children, my son, that means he is a father. Amen? And let thine eyes observe my ways. So you give the Lord your heart. Essentially what the Lord is saying, and I will give you my best benefit. Hallelujah. Uh, you will also write Psalm 51.10. Psalm 51 verse 10. So that you do not leave any uh, point that has weight, uh, any scripture that has weight. Uh, this is what it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. There are many things we can honor the Lord with. Now let us go to how we dishonor God. How do we dishonor God? Number one, in vain honor. That is professing honor, and yet our hearts are in other things. Isaiah 29, 13 that we read is what uh, will anchor that point. That is by paying lip service to him, we dishonor him. That is casual honor. Amen. Another way through which we dishonor God is by neglecting the house of God. By neglecting the house of God. The book of Haggai, Haggai 1, the book of Haggai 1, This is what it says. Haggai 1, 4 to 11. Haggai is just after Zephaniah and before Zechariah, between the two books. This is what it says, Haggai 1, 4 to 11. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your siled houses or in paneled houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. Ye did blow upon it. Why? saith the Lord of hosts. Because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. 
And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Amen. So whenever we dishonor God by neglecting his house, we experience drought in our lives, in every area of our lives. Amen. In all the uh, the tools of production, in everything. You cannot dishonor God by neglecting his house and expect him to honor you. Because why would he be honoring us when we dishonor him? So that is... Um, that is quite a dangerous way to dishonor the Lord because you can see all those uh, curses that come uh, come in. The drought upon the mountains, on the entire land, upon the corn, upon the new wine, upon the oil, upon which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of their hands. So that whatever you labor for becomes um, you. Another way uh, which is really, really bad is in Malachi. Let us go to Malachi once again. Malachi 3. Malachi 3. We had read it uh, in a way that uh, the Lord puts, his, puts it as robbery. Let's start from verse 8. But whenever there is rob, I want you when you read it, read it uh, this way. Is honor God, Amen. So let us all read. Malim to honor robbed is honor dishonored, Amen. Up to verse nine. Let's read eight to nine. One, two, go. Will a man dishonor God? Yet ye have dishonored me. But ye say, wherein have we dishonored thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with the for ye have dishonored me, even this whole house, this whole nation. Amen. Even this whole nation of Riot. <laughs> you have dishonored God. Hallelujah. So many amen up for Kabisa. So um the reason why I say that uh, it is dishonor unto the Lord, not to. Uh, meet our obligations of paying tithes and giving out offerings is because it is like you're saying uh, whatever affairs that uh, are run in the house of God uh, do not really deserve honor. Uh, it's like you're saying um, it, it reveals that contempt you have to towards uh, what matters uh, to God. So it is dishonor by the It is not just robbery. There is a deep-seated thing uh, on the surface of it, it is robbery. But the underlying thing there is dishonor. Total dishonor and contempt for the house of God. Number four, how we dishonor God? By honoring servants of God more than God him, himself. It is not bad to honor servants of God, but that should revolve around three main areas. Number one is respect. Number two is obedience. Number three is provision for the work of God. Unaishimu tumishwa mungu, unatikile ambacho nakuambia, because she has been placed over you as um, uh, a steward in the house of God over your welfare. And then number three, you honor the servant of God through yeah, you can choose to bless the uh, servants of God whichever way uh, it pleases you. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about money. It could be money whichever way that uh, you deem fit. So number four, by honoring servants of God more than God himself. First Samuel 2, 29. 
You see, God uh, desires that we glorify Him in all things. But when it comes to a point that uh, He doesn't receive any glory, and all the glory goes to the servant, then there is uh, so much danger in that. If all the honor, umekuja pale kwa get, umepatana na uh, a servant of God wile anachunga that get, alafu umepatia all the honor and yungepatia king, huh? Now you have placed all the honor on that servant. And then you will not get to see the king. So what hiyo itakusaidia na mnagani? It won't help you at all. So nowhere to place uh, honor. Honor the servant. But honor and worship God. Worship God and honor him more. First Samuel 2.29 Um... It says in here, yeah, sons of Eli, sons of Eli. Uh, it says, Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest, uh, chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people? Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house, and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me, for them that honor me, I will honor them, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. We had read that before. So ensure that um, whenever you honor God, do not honor the servant more than God. Amen. Uh, and uh, you can do that by ensuring the three things that we've mentioned. All things be uh, revolve around that. If you want to honor a servant of God, make sure it borders on respect, obedience, and provision, not worship. Honor to the servant and worship to the master. Um, so we are going to look at uh, a biblical example of them that received favor from the king. And we are going to read the book of Esther. By the way, uh, Royalty on us, royalty. The book of Esther. It's chapter, chapter 5. Esther chapter 5. Up to verse um, let's just read at verse eight because we know the story. Esther chapter five from verse one. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. All his house, and the king sat up on his royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that he obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What will you, Queen Esther? What will you, Queen Esther? And what shall be even given you to the half of the kingdom? And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the ban banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther has said. 
So the king and Haman came into the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther that the banquet of wine, what is to you? And what is your request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be perfect. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, if I have found favor in the sight of the king, if it pleases the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. Hallelujah. Amen. Child of God, what will thou, child of God, what is thy request? This is a king asking uh, King Ahasuerus, asking um, uh, Queen Esther, the uh, what she would have. And let us look at some elements. Let us just go back to chapter five. Now it came to us on the third day that Esther put on a royal apparel. Hallelujah! Ye are a royal priesthood. So before you appear before the king, and this is something that Esther knew, before she will appear before the king to place her petition, she will need to identify with royalty. How? By putting on the royal robe. So before you appear before the king, the king of kings, the Lord, um, the Lord our God, make sure in the inner court of the king's house. You see the way uh, kingdoms as a man is living, the way they have they, uh, say the throne is here. So the, the king will sit here and you have someone standing all over this place when you want to serve have the outer court. And then we pay for the money to make the local king here. The, the, the best place to be at. So if you are admitted to the inner court, the king has, um, you are essentially admitted to the throne. Amen? Umeleto mbeleza kiti cha mfalme and you can uh, make whatever request you have to the king. So Esther went before the king in, uh, into the inner court and he meets the king. So when the, and it was so, when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. Even before Esther utters a word, amen, the king saw Esther the way she was dressed, she saw, uh, he saw the robe, and so that gave her favor before the king. So it is quite important that you know, as we relate with the king, ensure you put on the royal robe over you the garment of righteousness that was handed you so make sure that that will give you favor before the king of kings and the king held out to esther the golden scepter that was in his hand christ we are told uh, will come back he has a scepter of um, a scepter of righteousness hallelujah so here the king had one of gold so esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter then say the king to her, where will thou? So, kwa hiyo story ni wapatia, mimi si kuwa na scepter. You see that uh, uh, fimbo, this DCC is una hile nakani. It has a, a portion up in a car golden kidogo, but it's not gold. Yeah, so that set a symbol of authority. So the king was essentially telling her that you have been admitted to the throne. Say whatever thing you have. What will thou, Esther? What is the question? shall be even given to the half of the kingdom. That is favor. Hallelujah. So Esther uh, was honored. Her request was honored as we read through uh, that life was extended her. And uh, she had come to make petition that uh, uh, some people be released. So 
that request was extended to her. So one thing we need to know, if we want to get, uh, if we want God to honor us, we need to identify with royalty. Hallelujah. We need to identify with royalty. For God does not honor commoners. You are not a barbarian, you are a royal uh, priesthood. And we can see also that uh, from the story of the prodigal son, from the story of the prodigal son who came back to uh, his senses and realized it's not good for me who is royalty so I need to go back uh, to my father how come I'm suffering here and yet my father is uh, and yet the house of my father has everything that I need how come I live in dishonor this much and yet uh, my father is eating uh, well in the, uh, in the kingdom. So we'll uh, think we'll look at that later. Uh, we were at the last point by being proud. We said we dishonor God by honoring servants more than God himself. Uh, the last one is by being proud. Proverbs 3.34 The Bible says that uh, He gives grace to the humble and resists the proud because they are dishonorable to Him. Pride is dishonor to the Lord. Uh, 3.34 says, Surely He scorned the Course, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. So we've seen that royalty honors royalty, and Esther was uh, was honored uh, as a result of identifying with the royalty. That robe that she wore gave her favor before the king. Um. So now, as we uh, as we wind up, we would like to um, we would like to place things uh, into perspective um, as we wind up. Fuse honor with respect, uh, honor with um, uh, obedience. So essentially, what is honor? Uh, because the book of Ephesians 6 on honoring of uh, fathers and mothers. Ephesians 6, Brother Mukanda. The Bible says that it may be well with you and you may live long on earth. From verse 1 to 3. Okay. Mm -hmm. Children, obey your, your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment of, the, of with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on, on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Honor thy father and mother. You see, this is the honor that goes beyond respect to parental authority. It is honor that goes beyond uh, obedience. Um, it is honor that uh, esteems authority. Hallelujah. So the sum total of all that, uh, you regard authority as high over you, uh, you respect authority, and are obedient to authority. And above all, you make sure that um, the authority your parents uh, know just Hallelujah. 
So that is the honor that we are talking about. And even the Bible defines honor in that manner. When the Bible says that honor shall not depart, for instance, from uh, a righteous man's house, for example, that means all the trappings of, uh, of this life, all the good things, uh, shall not depart from that place. So honor comes in many forms. So in the process of giving God the honor, do not confuse that uh, with, the, uh, with the worship of man. Do not think that by worshiping man, you are honoring God. Uh, in any case, you'd be, you'd be doing that which God does not uh, permit us to do and which is abhorrent unto him. So many times in the life of a Christian, it is good to, import, uh, it is good to point this out, that we give honor to the wrong places so that uh, no honor is reciprocated back to us. So ensure in your life as a Christian, you give honor where it is due. You give honor unto the Lord. So do not neglect God. Don't give all honor to the servants of God and then neglect God. By doing so, there is no honor that shall be due unto you. We know the servants of God in the lives of uh, many Christians wield some power. Hallelujah. They have some power in them in that they can admit you to levels of um, levels of blessings uh, from the Lord because there is an anointing placed on them by God to do that. Just the illustration, just the same way the illustration I uh, we, we gave uh, when we started. So you have a servant uh, that can either tell you to come and see the king or they can block you away from uh, seeing that king. So you don't give honor, all honor that is due to the king to that. Then you will be giving honor to the wrong places. Uh, but do not misunderstand me. What I'm just saying is, honor the servant, but worship uh, God alone. Yes, hallelujah. So that, um, uh, let us see the consequences of this honor, just briefly. As we finish the book of Esther 1. So the king called for Queen Vashti to come, but she declined. And that led to the replacement uh, with Queen Esther. Uh, Esther 1 10 to 12. And then verse 15. Uh, this is what the word of God says. Esther 1.10 On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bizda, Habona, Bigda, and Abagda, Zeta, and Kakas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of our house, the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. Uh, verse 12. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. So the queen dishonored the, 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 the king's uh, the king's word. Uh, she dishonored the king's sermon. Uh, then the king said to the wise men which knew the times, so was the king's man of the new law and judgment. And the next unto him was Kasha, Sheta, Admatha, Dashish, Meres, Masena, and Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law, because she had not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? And Nebuchad answered before the king and the princess, Vashti the queen had not done wrong to the king only, but also to the princess and to all people that are in the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen 
for this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their, in their eyes. When it shall be reported, the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. So you can read on and see uh, the consequences of dishonoring uh, the king's son, what uh, ensued after that. So it is not just something that uh, we, the Bible only speaks about. It's not a fairy tale. Honor has to be given unto the king. Because when you honor authority, then you benefit from that authority. stretched out uh, the golden center Christ is the of righteousness unto you the Christian so that you make your request what shall be done unto you O child of God and thank the Lord for his word um, just take some uh, take a moment to reflect on the areas you have not honored God and the ways in which you have dishonored Him. Let the Holy Spirit lead you as you pray unto the Lord. I don't know if worship team one is at Wimbia Ilerimbo ya wa ajabu. Just to reflect on the might of God and uh, His authority.
and we pray, King of all the glory, that we find favor before thee, O God. We pray that our petitions be answered by the King. We pray, King of all things, that through your sovereignty, O Lord, that through your power, O Lord, we may find favor before you, O Lord. Father, we are the royal priesthood, the work says. Today we want to identify with royalty, O King of all things, the glory. Teach us the language of the King. Teach us how to approach you, O Lord. Teach us how to come before your inner court, King of all the glory. Father, today we stretch out our hands, Lord, and receive from you, Lord. Today we stretch our hands, O God, and touch the sight of righteousness in the morning. Father, today we ask you in Jesus' name. May you help us, King of all the glory. Help us, Jehovah God. Help us to honor you. Teach us how to honor you, O God. Teach us how to obey you. Teach us how to respect you, O King of all things. Teach us how to give unto you all that is due you, O Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your message. We thank you for your word. We thank you even for the opportunity to minister, O Lord. Father, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for that realization, King of all things, that it may remain in our minds, O God, that we serve truly a powerful King, the King of Kings. Father, we pray that you help us to discharge honor unto thee. We are only men, O God. We do not know how to come before the King. We do not know how to draw before the King, O Lord. May you teach us this day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Uh, let us honor the Lord with our giving. 